Anthony Salvanto, thank you uh, once again so much for joining us. Americans still say that inflation is the top problem, uh, even as the national economic measures are showing improvement. Uh, what did we learn about what they're seeing and what they're feeling on a personal level? Well, you said the key words there, Ken, and it's personal level. When we asked them if their income is keeping pace with inflation, three quarters say no, that it isn't. So you look at some of those we call the macro numbers, the jobs market, which people acknowledge is good. You look at the macro numbers for the rates of inflation, but prices are still high. And so they're not necessarily feeling it. And that's important because when you ask people what they use to evaluate things, they say it's the personal more than those national numbers. And that's how you arrive at those feelings that it's still the most important problem, Ken. Um, something that a lot of people say they are feeling, in fact. Uh, if the White House says the, that the economic numbers are getting better nationally, Anthony, are people actually paying attention to what they're saying? They are paying attention, but it is outweighed by what they are feeling personally. That's what they tell us. Not only do they look at their pocketbook, not only are they looking at what's affecting them when they go out to buy groceries, and they're still seeing high prices, even if the rate of inflation has slowed, but the other things that they weigh very heavily are people that they know, people around them, the businesses in their communities. Now, this isn't new. This is often how people make decisions and determinations about where they think the larger sense of the economy is headed, but it does perhaps show some of that disconnect between the macro and the personal. I would add this, Ken, that there's also a larger sense we're finding about how the economy works and its fairness in the words or minds of voters. And that is we're finding more people say that they feel like it's only the wealthy who in this environment have more opportunities to get ahead, more so than the middle class. And that's a larger issue about whether or not people feel like they can get ahead that's really, I think, been impacted by these last couple of years of inflation, Ken. Yeah, and Anthony, for the folks who are reporting uh, having to deal with these kinds of challenges, what do they want done from the White House, and how does any of that uh, affect uh, the views on the president? Well, it starts with this. Uh, the president's rating for handling inflation is low, and it has been. Only about a third of Americans saying he's doing a good job that they approve of there. Now, that's gone hand in hand with them feeling like inflation is a large problem. People will reason from results on that, number one. Number two, you do find a majority that feels a president can control inflation. So this may cut both ways. Up until now, he's gotten some blame for it. Going forward, if prices come down, if the rate continues to slow, will he get credit for that? That remains a question going into 24. I can say this much, too, about policies. There is no majority appetite for more interest rate hikes. Now, that's something that people in other polling have told us is part, in their minds, of their issue with getting ahead, making a large purchase, buying a house. But you've got a majority that does not want to see any more rate hikes as well as a matter of uh, as a matter of course and trying to get a handle on inflation, Ken. Yeah, of course. Uh, let's pivot here for a second, talk a little bit about the war. Now, what's happening with the president's handling of the Israel-Hamas war? How has any of that changed? It's changed a little bit. It's gone down a little bit from our October polling. So a little more negative in his handling of that war. And one reason is that you find a sizable portion of the electorate, or the, the Americans, I should say, who say that his administration's approach is not having an impact in bringing that war to a successful or peaceful resolution. So there again, people looking at what they see as the outcome and then gauging the president and his administration based on that. I would add this, that we've seen an increase in the number of Democrats who feel like the president is showing too much support for Israel. Now, while a majority of Democrats still support or approve how the president's handling it, it's that kind of difference that I think is worth keeping an eye on because, of course, as with any foreign policy approach, the president would want to have a unified party behind that, that approach there, Ken. Yeah. Anthony Salvanto, Director of Elections and Surveys for CBS News, we thank you so much for joining us and for offering your insight. Take care.